Okay, so we've been looking at those complex problems of finding the triangles and using trig to finding missing pieces and whatever. We're going to put those behind us now and make the next step here. Um, we may come back to more examples of those later in a week or so, depending on how our time frame is looking. But for right now, what's that? Um, I want to take, we'll come back to those. I want to give those some time for you guys to look them over and work on them, and we'll come back to them next week. So let's take a look now, um, just a little review of how this all works on our unit circle. Well, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at reviewing how the trig functions are found on the unit circle. And then we're going to actually get into something called oblique triangles. And oblique triangles are triangles without a right angle. So on our unit circle, if you recall, our angles are used to define a point on the outer edge of this circle. Remember, the circle has a radius of one unit. And, it's, and this is our zero degree or our initial side here. So all of our angles start there. So if we have a 30 degree angle, it looks something like that. And that 30 degree angle defines a point on our circle right there. And our trig functions are defined from that point on the circle. Remember the technical definition of a sine is the distance from a point on the circle to the reference diameter. And that horizontal diameter is our reference diameter. So that length is the sine of 30 degrees. The cosine is the sine of the complement. The complementary angle would be here, so the cosine goes like this. So we define the cosine to just be this distance here. Well, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. So the distance from that point, if this angle is 30 degrees, the distance from that point down to here is 0.5. We use this then to look at something. If, I'm, if I tell you that the sine of A equals 0.5, we can figure out what angle A is. When we're looking for the angle, of course, we use an inverse trig function. This is a sine, so we're going to use an inverse sine. We punch into our calculator inverse sine of 0.5, so second sine of 0.5. We get 30 degrees, which makes sense because it just said the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. But there's a problem here. That's not the only possibility. Because a sine being 0.5, all that is really telling us is that that point on the circle is 0.5 or one half of a unit above that reference diameter. There is another spot on the circle that is also 0.5 or half of a unit above the reference diameter. And that's over on the left side over here. So that's also 0.5. What angle corresponds to that? Well, that's the angle we're looking for there. But the key to finding it is this triangle here. If this is 0.5 and this is a right angle, we know that the radius here is also 1, right? The radius of that circle is 1 no matter what direction it's going. So we've got, basically what we have is we have congruent circles, equal circle, or equal circle, congruent triangles, equal triangles. This triangle 
is equivalent to this one. So that means this angle here has to be what? 30 degrees. That's what we refer to as a reference angle. The reference angle is the angle between the terminal side. Now the terminal side is where the angle stops. For the 30 degree angle, that is the terminal side. This is also a terminal side, but it's not for a 30 degree angle, it's actually a 150 degree angle. Well, how did we get the 150 degrees there? Subtract from 180, yes. We know this is a straight line across here. If this is 30, then 180 minus 30 has to give us 150 degrees. You got it? No, it's just down here. So what that is telling us is the sine of 30 degrees has to equal the sine of 150 degrees. Because both of those have a 30 degree reference angle. Now there are two other spots on this circle that have a 30 degree reference angle. This is 30 degrees here. What angle is that? If I started here and went all the way around. Well, this here is 180, right? 180 plus 30 or 210. There's also a spot over here. That's 30 degrees. What angle is that if I wrapped it all the way around? Well, the full circle is 360, right? That's 30 degrees short. That's 30, 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. This one here was 180 plus 30. So all four of those, 30 degrees, 150 degrees, our 210 and our 330 degree angles, all four of those have a 30 degree reference angle. I put these two separately, however, because these two have the same sign. The sign of both of those is 0.5. These two have a sign that's related but slightly different. What is this length here? Well, the length is still 0.5, but this time it goes down. So it's a negative 0.5 for those signs. Same over here. Negative 0.5. So they're related, but they're different. You know, you can distinguish between them because of the negative. So when we are doing an inverse sign on our calculator, these two don't matter because we would be able to distinguish between them. This is the case that we have to keep in mind because when we do an inverse sign, it's going to give us this one here that's an acute angle. But anytime we do an inverse sign, there's also an, an obtuse angle that it could possibly be. So we're going to come back to that in just a minute. Let's talk more about these reference angles. Reference angles, remember, are the angle to that reference diameter. And the reference diameter is that horizontal diameter. So if I give you an angle of 82 degrees, what is its reference angle? Perfect. Yeah, 82 degrees is just right here. The closest angle to that 
horizontal diameter. That reference diameter is just 82. If I give you an angle of 111 degrees, that goes past 90, which means that we're closer to this one. Right? So what's that angle going to be? One eighty minus one eleven, or sixty nine degree reference angle. Does that make sense? Where I got the sixty nine? I just couldn't figure out the supplement. A supplement. I just couldn't subtract it in my head. So. Oh sure. <laughs> the key is it's whatever angle takes us back to this horizontal diameter. So if I give you 293 degrees. Well, 293 degrees, there's 90, 180, 270. So 293 has to be somewhere in here. So the closest shot back to the, the reference diameter is right there. So yeah, that's the difference between the 293 and 360. So you are absolutely correct, it was 67 degrees. Or I might give you 193 degrees. So again, there's 90, 180, 193 is going to be down here. So where's the closest shot? You got it, back down to 180. 13 degrees is the reference angle. Of those four, I want you to give me two things. In your notes, I want you to find the reference angle for each. Second, I want you to tell me which ones have the same sign. So I'll give you a minute to do that for each of them. <coughs> because it didn't get past 90 degrees, so the closest is just go right back to zero. What is that called again? The horizontal diameter. The horizontal diameter, the reference diameter. The explanation is just the angle to the, the closest angle to the horizontal diameter, or the closest angle to the reference diameter. The same sign as the negative? Um, no. no. I, I think so. Let's go over here. So 71 degrees is right here. What's its reference angle? 
71 degrees. 289 is over here. What's its reference angle? 71 degrees. 251. Oops, I skipped that. 251 is right here. What's its reference angle? It's going to go back to 180, right? So that's 71. And 109 is right here. Also 71. So all of them have a reference angle of 71. They're going to come in pairs. All of them have a sign that's the same length. The difference is two of them are negative and two of them are positive. Which two are positive? Those two, right? The two that are supplements will have the same sign. Well, you know, it's, yeah, you have to first know that they have the same reference angle. And you know that if they're supplements, they will have the same reference angle. Yeah. So if I give you that sine of A equals 0.825. Find A. And there's going to be two answers. Now I'll walk you through this one. So we're going to do the second sign, 0.825. So we did the inverse sign of 0.825. We got 55.59 degrees. That is one of the possible answers. That's the acute angle, which is what the calculator always gives us. But along with that, there's going to be an obtuse angle. That obtuse angle, 180 minus 55.59, which is going to be 124.41 degrees. That would be supplement. Yep. Remember, you get compliments when you, yeah, you get compliments when you're right. So compliments add up to 90 degrees. Right? Mm -hmm. You had said compliment, but there are supplement. There's supplementary angles. <laughs> you know how to do it. That's all that matters. Whether you have the right term for it or not, it don't matter. So if the sine of B is 0 0.348, find the two possibilities for B for me. Do this one in your notes, Chris. So the first value you get is 20.37 if we round it off. The second one then is going to be 180 minus 20.37, which will be 159.63. What do you think? So why am I stressing this? Well, because it becomes a big deal when we start looking at oblique triangles. When we're in a right triangle, because we know that that angle is a right angle, that angle has to be 90 degrees. 
And we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. We call that the angle sum. With a 90 degree angle in the triangle, these other two have to add up to 90 degrees, which means that neither one of them can be bigger than 90. They both have to be smaller than 90, actually, because one of them can't be zero. So when we have a right triangle, we don't have to worry about this possibility of having different signs. It's when we have a non-right triangle, which we said was called an oblique triangle. Yeah, it should be recording. Yeah, we're recording. The camera comes right off the computer screen. So, uh, nope, that one's only if I'm broadcasting over the network out to other schools. So, anyway, no, I mean, you, you figured it out in less than six months. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has always been a point. It, it usually is. For some reason, it must have shut down while it was pointing the other way today. So we're looking at an oblique triangle. Um, we always label the sides, as we've mentioned, or the angles, as we've mentioned, with capital letters, A, B, and C. They could be any capital letters, G, E, F, whatever. But then once we've labeled the angles with those capital letters, the sides are labeled, remember, by the angle across from it. So this side here would be side little a. This would be side little c and little b. The reason those are linked together is, if you recall, if I kept this side and this side the same, but I changed angle a, if I made angle a bigger, it makes side a bigger. If I made angle A smaller, it would make side A smaller. So if everything else is held the same, this is the side that is affected by the side uh, size of angle A. And we've also mentioned the largest side has to be opposite the largest angle. So if I give you a triangle like this, where I tell you that this is 81 degrees, this is 72 degrees, and this is 27 degrees, hopefully that adds up. It looks like that adds up to 180. And I call these angles A, B, and C. So little a, little b, little c. Which side has to be the largest? Side A, because it is across from the largest angle. So what we're going to look at now is a rule that takes advantage of that relationship. Since the size of the opposite side is related to the size of the angle, we use a ratio, and it is called the law of sines. The law of sines can be written in one of two ways. The way it makes the most sense to me is to put the, side, the length of the side over the angle, but uh, some books will put it the other way around. Since the length of side A is determined by the size of angle A, we use a ratio of A, side A to angle A. But it's not related directly to the angle, it's related directly to the sine of the angle. Within a triangle, now this is only within the same triangle, 
You can't go from one triangle to the next. It doesn't transfer like that. But within a triangle, the ratio of the length of side A to the sine of angle A is a constant. So little a over the sine of capital A is going to be equal to little b over the sine of capital B, which will be equal to the length of little c over the sine of capital C. Now remember, a triangle has six parts. Three sides, three angles. We can use law of sines if we know one of two sets. If we know two angles and one side, we can always use law of sines. Partly because if we know two angles, we always know all three angles. If we know two sides and one angle, the angle has to be opposite one of the sides. So let's explore this. I give you that this is 75 degrees and that this here is 60 degrees. And I tell you that this side here is 14 millimeters. I can label these sides and angles however I want to. Usually we just label the angles, A, B, and C as such, and you would have to label the sides. So, of course, this would be side A, side B, side C. So now the relationship is we look for the angle that we have a side opposite it. Here, where's our pair where we have an angle and its opposite side? The 14 and the, the 75. So 14 is the length of the side. 75 degrees is the angle. So it's going to be 14 over the sine of 75. So that's the first thing we need is we need to have a sine and its opposite angle, or a side and its opposite angle. Now we look at what what's the other piece of information we have here. This angle B. So the sine of B is going to go on bottom. Your sine of 60 degrees is going to go on bottom. And which side is opposite it? Side little b. So that's what's going to go above it. So now we find little b by cross multiplying and dividing. So this is 14 times, sine, bless you, sine of 60 divided by sine of 75. 12.55. So B over here is 12.55 millimeters. <clears throat> What's that, this angle? Yep. So this just comes from here because that's the angle that's across from the 14. This is the other one, so that's across from the B. That's what B is about it. So when you type it in, 14 times sine of 60, so make sure you close the parentheses, and divided by the sine of 75. And it should just pop right out.
Did it work? Okay. Now, we need angle C and side C. Whenever we know two angles, we always know the third angle. So angle C is just going to be 180 degrees minus the 75 and the 60. The 75 plus 60 is 135. 180 minus 135 is 45 degrees. So that tells us that this angle here is a 45 degree angle. So now we can find side C. We're back to using our 14 over the sine of 75. We're looking for side C over the sine of 45 degrees. So now once again, cross, multiply, and divide. So 14 times the sine 45 degrees divided by sine 75 degrees. 10.25 we get. So this is 10.25 millimeters per C. Is this geometry? Geometry and trig, yeah. So now that was the simplest case where we know two angles and one of the opposite sides. The next case up the ladder of difficulty would be knowing two angles and a side that's between them. So let's say I tell you this is 21 degrees and this here is 81 degrees. And if I tell you that this side here says 25 millimeters. So again, I can label it however I want to. A lot of times in the packet and in the homework, they'll already be labeled. I'm going to call them A, B, C. So this is little a, little b, little c. Do I have an angle on its opposite side right now? At the moment, the answer is no. But can I get an angle on its opposite side? Yeah. Because anytime I know two of the angles, I know all three. So my first step here is going to be to find angle B, which is just going to be 180 minus the 81 and the 21, which is what, 78 degrees? So once we know that this is 78 degrees, now we do have a side and its opposite angle. So what's going to be our ratio that we start off with here? Twenty-five over the sine of seventy-eight degrees. And now we can pick one. Let's say I want to find side A next. Sine of what angle is going to go below that? 21. Because if this is side A, the opposite angle is the 21 degrees. So we will cross, multiply, and divide. 25 times sine of 21 divided by 78. We get 9.16. Millimeters per A. And now we're ready to find C. We still have our 25 over the sine of 78 degrees. Is going to equal C over the sine of 81 degrees. Now before we find this, what do we know about side C in relation to A and B? The it's the biggest. It's opposite the largest angle. So side C better be bigger than the 25. So we'll cross multiply. 25 times sine of 80 divided by sine of 78. 
25 times sine of 81 divided by sine of 78. 25.24. So it's just barely bigger, but it is bigger. So that's their second easiest option. We have two angles and we have the side that's in between them. And really all we have to do is find the third angle and we're good to go. <laughs> Bless you. So now let's look at where we have two sides and one angle. And remember, the qualification here must have an angle that is opposite one of the sides. So here, if I have this angle of 75 degrees, this side here of 12 millimeters, and this side here of 23 millimeters, do I have a side and an angle that's opposite it? No. No, I don't. Here I cannot use law of sine. That's something that's going to come up in the next couple of days. We're going to get to law of cosines that will allow us to do that. Just law of sines today. If I give you this angle here is bless you, 51 degrees. This side here is 21 millimeters. And this side over here is 34 millimeters. Now, we have an angle and its opposite side. So now we're ready to go. We have the 21 millimeters over the sign of 51 degrees. Now the only other piece of information we have is the 34 millimeters. That's a side. So 34 goes on top. The sign of which angle goes on bottom here? What angle is across from or opposite the 34? Angle C. So that's the sign of angle C. Now there's going to be an extra step involved here because now we're not looking for a missing side, we're looking for a missing angle. So we're going to cross, multiply, and divide first, as always. So sine of 51 degrees, make sure I close my parentheses, times 34, and divided by 21. It gives me 1.258. Well, that is the sine of angle C. To get angle C, I'd have to do what? Inverse, right? C would be the inverse sine now. Now, for those of you that have already punched in your calculator, you've noticed what happens. It gives you an error. So I tried to do the inverse sine of that, second sine. It says error. Why? Well, a sign can never be bigger than one. So what this is telling me here is that this is an impossible triangle. This triangle cannot be made. What it's saying is this side over here is too short. If that's 51 degrees and this is 34 millimeters, 21 millimeters is not long enough. 21 millimeters is only going to reach about here. It's not going to make it all the way back to that other one, other side. So let's try that again. And that is something you're going to run into. That is one possible case.
does not make a triangle. The reason this was a problem was because the side opposite the angle was the shorter side. And when the side opposite the angle is the shorter of the two sides, this is one possibility that it does not make a triangle. The other possibility, again, the side opposite the angle is the shorter of the two sides. Let's say this is 28 degrees here. We'll make this 32 millimeters. Actually, I'm going to put it up here. We'll make this 32 millimeters. And we'll make this here 17 millimeters. Now I'm going to label it ABC as always. In this situation, I mean, the, the picture is drawn in such a way that it leads us to believe that B here is an acute angle. But if I just gave you the information that angle A is 28 degrees, side A is 17 millimeters, and side B is 32 millimeters, there would be two possibilities here. The 17 millimeter side over here, side A, could go just like that and form an acute angle here. Or... It could go like this and be 17 millimeters and form an obtuse angle here. This angle and this angle are both going to have the same sign. In other words, they are going to be supplements. So there are actually two possibilities. If we are given a triangle like this where we can tell that this angle is acute, you can go ahead and assume it's acute. Where it gets tricky is if it's like 87 or 88 degrees where it's really close to a right angle, it's almost impossible to tell if it's 87 degrees or 93 degrees. So you'll have to be told whether that's an acute angle or an obtuse angle. But here it's obviously less than 90 degrees if I'm using the black outline of the triangle here. So we're going to solve this one assuming that B is acute. So doing that, we have 17 over the sine of 28 degrees. That's 17 and the opposite angle is 28 degrees equals 32 over the sine of B. So we cross multiply and divide here. Sine of 28, make sure you close our parentheses, times 32 divided by 17, 0.8837. So the sine of B is 0.8837 which implies that B is the inverse sine of 0.8837. Now, I leave it in my calculator so I don't have this huge round off error. Notice I still left it there. I'm just going to do second sign, then second answer. That gives me 62.09 degrees. So this is 62.09 degrees here for angle B. Should be down by the equal sign. Now that I have that angle, I can find angle C up here. Because angle C is just going to be 180 minus the 62.09 and minus the 28. Angle C. Oh, what is that? 790. 
89.91 degrees, according to C. So now that I know that angle C here is 89.91 degrees, I can go ahead and find side C. So I still have 17 over the sine of 28 degrees. It's going to be side, side C, little c, over the sine of 89.91 degrees. And again, we cross multiply and divide. So 17 times the sine, 89.91. Close my parentheses, divided by the sine of 28. So 36.21. So C is 36.21. How would we handle it if that angle were obtuse? So if the triangle were drawn like this, and this is 28 degrees, this is 17 millimeters, and this is 32 millimeters. Once again, ABC, ABC. Well, it's still going to be 17 over the sine of 28. And 32 over the sine of B. That part hasn't changed. We're still going to cross, multiply, and divide here. And get the sine of B is going to be that point 8837. So that B is the inverse sine of point 8837. However, this time when our calculator spits out 62.09 degrees, we know that that's not the answer. How do we find the actual angle for B? There you go. It's the supplement. We subtract that from 180. It's 117.91 degrees is angle B. Now we would proceed to find angle C by subtracting from 180. So it'd be 180 minus 117.91 minus 28, which ends up being 34.09 degrees. And from there, then you would find the length of side C. Okay, we were down to a minute left here, so I'm going to give you stuff. The old packet that you already have, page 374, there are exercises on finding angles from sines and identifying both angles, and then finding the sine, cosine, and whatever of angles bigger than 90 degrees. Then I'm going to give you a new packet, and this new packet is going to be page 381, 1 through 17, the odds. Again, be aware that some of these, there may be two possible triangles. For those complex trig applications, like I said, I want you guys to take some more time to keep looking those over. We will come back and talk about them again next week. But a lot of them just take time to look at them and try things. So I want you guys to have some time to play with them before we come back and go over any more of them.
Dankeschön.